when we're looking at the periodic table, the periodic table can tell us all about the different subatomic particles that make up that particular atom of that particular element. So for example, if we consider lithium here, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw that box of lithium a little bit larger so we can have a look properly. I have an atom which has three protons. It can only be lithium. It cannot be anything else. Okay, so that's what determines what it is. Now, if I look on my periodic table here, if I said I had an atom that had four protons, beryllium here has the atomic number four, so that means my atom would be beryllium. Can't be anything else. If I said I had an atom which had um, nine protons, then I would look across to find where the atomic number nine is, and it's there. So that means my atom would have to be fluorine. Okay, let's just move that across there. If it had nine, that means my atom would have to be fluorine. It couldn't be anything else. Okay, so that's why this number here is the most important. This number here, the atomic number, tells you how many protons. Okay, now the other significant thing is, remember before when we were looking at um, the structure of the atom, we said that atoms always have the same number of protons and electrons. So here for my lithium, if I say for my lithium protons, I have um, three, sorry, not seven. So protons, I have three, that's plus three, three protons. That means in terms of my electrons, I will also have three. Okay, so three protons and three electrons. Okay, so um, plus three charge and minus three charge, overall charge on this atom is going to be zero. Now, the other subatomic particle is the neutrons. Now we can use our um, element box to work out the number of neutrons. And the way that we do this is we use this number here. Now this number here is not the atomic number, it's called the atomic mass number. Now, if we think about this, we said in an atom that the mass of an atom is made up of the protons and the neutrons. The electrons are so small that we say they have zero mass. So if the mass is made up of the protons and the neutrons, the atomic mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons all together. Okay. Now, this is how we can work out how many neutrons. Because if we look at this, if we've got the nucleus of this atom here, and we've said that we know we've got three protons in the nucleus, because that's my atomic number. I know I have three protons in the nucleus. Then I look at my atomic mass number, but my atomic mass number here tells me that I've got seven protons and neutrons all together. Okay, so my protons plus my neutrons have to total seven. What that means is I can work out how many neutrons I have. Because if I've got seven all together and three of them are protons, then to work out my neutrons, what I would do for my neutrons, oh, I'll do it here, is 
the mass number, which is the large number, take away the atomic number, which is the small number. Okay, so the mass number, how much we have all together, which is seven. So now I've got seven particles, protons and neutrons together in my nucleus. Take away the three that I know are my protons equals four. So four plus three would be seven. So that means in my nucleus for lithium, I have four neutrons. Okay, so three protons, three electrons, and then my last particles, which are my neutrons, I have four. Now, if I have three protons and I have three electrons, I may be wanting to draw the electronic structure for this atom. Now, because I know how many electrons I have, I should therefore be able to draw and put them on my electron shells. Now, if I look at my electron shell for lithium, if I was to draw these three electrons on, I would put two on my first shell and then I would put one on my second electron shell. Now you might be wondering, why don't I just put all three on that first electron shell or that first energy level? And the reason would be that certain electron shells can only hold a certain number of electrons. So this here is the key to drawing electrons on electron shells. So what we'll do is we will have a go at just a, a couple more to see if we get the hang of this. And then maybe we'll give you some to just have a go at. Now I'm going to rub this off. There we go. So, if we look at hydrogen, okay, now hydrogen has one one in the element box. So that means atomic number is one, one proton, one electron, and then one minus one is zero, zero neutrons. So if I was drawing um, hydrogen as an electronic structure, I've got my hydrogen in the middle, I only need to put one electron on. So I would only have my first electron shell with one electron and that's it. If I have a uh, go at another example now, um, so if we have magnesium, magnesium has the atomic number 12 and the atomic mass number 24. Now, if we look at this, what this means is we've got 12 protons. And if it's got 12 protons, it's got 12 electrons. And 24 take away 12 means it has 12 neutrons too. And if I'm drawing this out, what I would do is I'd draw the nucleus, put what it is in the nucleus, which is magnesium. Actually, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we've got magnesium in my nucleus. Now, if we look here, we're going to have 12 electrons. So my first, I'm going to write the configuration first. So on my first electron shell, I will have two electrons but then I've still got 10 that I need to put on 
So that means on my second electron shell, I'm going to need eight. I can't put any more than eight because my second electron shell will be full because those are the rules. So then what that means is on my third electron shell, I will then have to put the remaining two. So I've got two and eight, which is 10, and then two, which makes my 12. So when I'm drawing this electron structure out then, so my first electron shell is going to have two. My second electron shell is going to have eight. Now, the way that we do this is to start off with, we try and separate out, if we need more than four, um, you try and separate out the four to start with. So I know I'm going to need eight on this electron shell. So one, two, three, four, and then we pair up. So I know I need eight all together. So I'm going to pair up, which means I've got eight on this second electron shell. And it also helps when you're trying to count how many electrons you've put on the electron shells. So now I've got my two. And I've got my eight, so I've put 10 electrons on all together. I can't put any more on this second electron shell because it's full. That's the maximum we can put on. So then I go to my third electron shell and I have two electrons left to put on. So I can put both of them on here. Now, it doesn't matter if you put one here, one here, one here, one here, one here or one here. That's fine. OK, you choose. There's no right or wrong answer there. OK, because in reality, these electrons are orbiting the nucleus, so that's up to you. OK, but the key thing to remember when we're putting electrons on electron shells. First shell, two electrons, maximum. Second shell, eight. Third shell, eight. So basically, the first one has two. And then you're going up in eights. And if it's more than eight, then you need to go to the next energy level. Um, so you work from your inside outwards. So the first energy level is two maximum. Then eight on the second. If you need more than eight, then you go to the next. And so you're just moving from the inside outwards. But you just got to bear in mind the first energy level has two and not eight. OK. So um, what I would like you to do is now um, just have a go at the first drawing the electron structures for the first 20 elements on the periodic table. OK, so let's go through these. So first of all, um, I think we've already looked at hydrogen, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it again. So hydrogen has one electron, so it would have one electron in the middle there. Then if we go across, atomic number two is helium. Helium has two electrons, so two electrons and that first shell is full. Now if we look at this, first shell is full and helium is in the the end column the I call it groups is in the end group group zero of the periodic table then the next one is lithium so lithium has three electrons two electrons that one's full so lithium one two and then the third one goes on to the next electron shell then the next one has four which is beryllium so beryllium one two three four
10 and a lowercase e, which has 10. So we've got a two in the first shell, an eight in the second shell. That makes 10 all together. Now, can you see by pairing up how it makes it so much easier to count how many electrons we've put on? And then next we've got sodium. So sodium is Na. Okay, now sodium has 11. So we've got two on the first, then eight. So I can see that by drawing my electron configuration. But because it's got 11, it needs another one. So I can't put any more on this electron shell because it's full. So I have to draw my next electron shell because I still have one electron to put on. And there we go. So that's my sodium. Now, potassium has 19. The second electron shell is full. I can't put any more electrons on this, this next, this electron shell. So I have to now go to my next electron shell for potassium. And there's my one. The um, electron structures for the first 20 elements. Now, when we look at the periodic table now, I'm just going to rub this out. Okay, so when we're looking now at the periodic table, okay, what we have on the periodic table is we have different names for the rows and the columns. Now, these columns going downwards here are called groups so we've got group one group two this middle part are called the transition metals and then we have group three group four group five group six group seven and group zero now group zero used to be called group eight but it's called group zero now okay so we've got our groups one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and group zero. Then the rows that go across on the periodic table are the periods. Okay. So hydrogen and helium are in period one, row one. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon are in period two, row two. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon are in period three, row three and so on. So the periods are the rows going across and the groups are the columns going down. And you might want to, to ask what's the significance of these. Now, if we're looking at our electronic structures as we drew them out, Let's have a look at, we're not going to draw them all, we'll have a, a look at a few. Now, if we look at lithium, okay, lithium is in group one. Okay, so lithium is in group one. Now, lithium has three, um, three electrons. So... That would be two in the first electron shell, one in the second. Now, if we then have a look at the second element, which is sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons altogether. So that would be two in the first electron shell, eight in the second, and then one in the last. Okay. 
and then if we look at potassium just going to write these out potassium has 19 so that's 2 and 8 is 10 and 8 is um, 18 and then 1 is 19 now if we look at these in the outermost shell all of these elements have one electron so anything that's in group one has one electron in their outermost shell if we look at group two okay we have beryllium which is four electrons two two then we have magnesium which has 12 electrons, 2, 8, 2, and then we have calcium and so on. Calcium is 20, so that would be 2, 8, 8, 2. Again, it's in group 2, 2 electrons in the outermost shell. And that works for all of the groups. Okay, so everything here that is in group one has one electron on the outside electron shell. Anything that's in group two has two electrons on the outside electron shell. Anything that's in group three has three. Group four, four. Group five, five electrons on the outside. Group six, six electrons on the outside. Group seven, seven electrons on the outside. And group zero has a full outside electron shell. So helium's full with two electrons and then all the others will have eight on the outer electron shell. So that's the significance of the groups. It tells us how many electrons on the outer electron shell. And if we look at the periods, if we look here, lithium is in period two. And if we were drawing the electron shells, lithium and beryllium, we would draw two electron shells. Sodium is in period three. If we were drawing the electron shells, Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, all of these would have three electron shells. If we were drawing um, period four, all of these would have four electron shells. So the periods tell us how many electron shells and the groups tell us how many electrons on the outermost electron shell. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at is isotopes. Now, isotopes, again, is something that, you know, if you learn it for chemistry, you know it for physics. Um, it's exactly the same. Isotopes aren't different in physics and different in chemistry. It's just exactly the same thing. Now, sometimes what happens is we have elements, um, we have, sorry, we have atoms of the same element that have a different number of neutrons. So, um, they might have one more neutron or two more neutrons or so on. They, you know, there may be a slight difference, but they're still the same element because they still have the same number of protons. So as a definition, isotopes, what we say are um, atoms of the same element with the same number of protons because that's what makes them the um, element that they are and if they've got the same number of protons they'll have the same number of electrons because atoms have no charge okay but a different number of neutrons. So as an example, if we have a look at carbon, okay, we can have two isotopes of carbon. We can have carbon 12 and carbon 14. Now, um, sometimes when we write the isotopes, we don't write the numbers at the bottom. That's because we don't. the numbers at the bottom aren't going to be different. Um, if it's carbon, it has to have atomic number six. That's what makes it carbon. It can't be any different. 
So if we look at these, carbon 12, carbon 12, atomic number six. So in terms of protons, it has six. If it has six protons, it will have six electrons. And the number of neutrons is the mass number take away the atomic number. So 12 take away six is six. But then if we look at this second isotope here, carbon 14, again, protons is the atomic number, has six. If it has six protons, it is going to have six electrons. Now, for the neutrons, 14 take away six. This isotope has eight neutrons. So by our definition here, these are atoms of the same element. So they're both carbon because, because these atoms both have six protons. It makes them carbon. So they both have the same number of protons. They both have the same number of electrons. However, they have a different number of neutrons. So these are isotopes. Now, sometimes we may have to do a calculation with isotopes to work out the relative atomic mass. Now, when, when normally when you look at a periodic table, there's usually one element that sticks out a little bit, um, which is chlorine. Okay, now if we look here, they've got chlorine there, and we can see that um, the relative atomic mass has a 0.5 in it. And you might be wondering, well, why? how can you have a 0.5? And this is to do with isotopes. So what we'll do is we'll consider now chlorine. Okay, so chlorine can have two isotopes. We have chlorine 35 and we have chlorine 37. And these two isotopes occur um, in in different abundances. That means different amounts, naturally. Now, what tends to happen is chlorine 35 tends to have an abundance of, compared to chlorine 37, of 3 to 1. Okay, so we tend to have, in terms of ratios, three parts of chlorine 35 and one part of chlorine 37. Now it can be written as a ratio or it could be written as a percentage. So we could say 75% compared to 25%. Okay, it's the same ratio, three to one. So to work out the relative atomic mass and the relative atomic mass is you may see it written like this relative atomic mass okay we have to do a calculation and the calculation works either with a ratio or with the percentage so if this was to come up as a question it could be that you know it could be written as you have chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 with um, relative ab abundances three to one respectively. So if it was actually written out as a question, you might see it written out like this. Okay, so you might see it written out as chlorine 35 and oh, chlorine, chlorine 37 um, are respectively in abundances either three to one or 75 percent 25 percent something like that and then the question would be calculate the ar or it may say relative atomic mass now to do this calculation what you would do is it is 
how much of chlorine 35 you have plus how much of chlorine 37 you have divided by the total. So to write this out, the AR would be, now here we can use either one, I'm going to use the ratio, okay, so it would be 35 times 3, because that's how much I have, plus, so that's my 35 times 3, plus, then it tells me I have one part of chlorine 37, so if we looked at the question there, it says three to one respectively. That means three of the first one, one of the second one. Okay, so the chlorine 37 times one. Okay, and then it's divided by because it's out of the total we have all together. So the total, if we've got three parts of this, one part of this, the total is going to be three plus one. So all together, I've got four parts. And if you work that out, it works out at 35.5. And if you were working this out, what I would do is I would put this into my calculator, work it out, write down what it is, put this into my calculator, work it out, write down what it is, add them two together, press equals and then divide by four. Just if you just, you know, be careful with your calculators, make sure that you, you're working things out properly because if you put things in, in the wrong order, you might come out with an incorrect answer. So I always think it's good to show you're working out just in case you get a wrong answer at the end. You might still get some marks if you've shown you're working out there. Okay. If you were doing it as percentages, you would do it in exactly the same way apart from um, so instead of three to one um, and it being out of four altogether, you could do it as percentages and you'd still get the same answer. So here you would have 75% here. And here you would have 25%. Oh, that's not writing properly. Let's try it this way. So it'd be times 25% there and then if we've got 75% and 25% all together that's 100% so then it'll be out of 100% there and you would still get the same answer it wouldn't work out any differently at all okay so it's all based on how much you have of each particular isotope times it by how much you have whether it's a ratio or whether it's a percentage and then it's divided by the total and that gives you the relative atomic mass and that's why on the periodic table um, because of the relative abundances of chlorine it's always written as 35.5 okay so we've covered quite a lot today um, we've looked at atoms we've looked at elements we've looked at the structure we've looked at you know electron structures we've looked at why they're in particular groups because it's how many electrons on the outside we've looked at why they're in particular periods on the periodic table that's because that's how many electron shells they have and then lastly we've finished off on isotopes so i hope this has been helpful Hi.